morning everyone dr debs here again dr deborah williams all right so just came back from my exercise cooling a little bit had some water and as i walked in i said oh, what can i share with my friends today what knowledge can i um give you uh, from the lord for health spiritual and physical health and i saw this plant now this is what we call croton again most persons know this as a edging so we tend to plant it around the yard and it grows high and thick and it creates a nice edging to separate our yard from the neighbor and give us some privacy and so it's a beautiful plant and i see it all over the caribbean so i've traveled all over the caribbean and i see it all over the place so we call it croton now you see a flower you see an edge protector i see medication for god's children to be in good health so I said, okay, I'm going to come in and make some croton tea. <laughs> yes. You know, whenever I do presentations and I bring up the croton, it always shock everybody like, seriously? Croton? Can you drink? It? Oh, yes. God has put the healing properties in the plant for his children to be in good health. Now, I learned about croton and its health benefits all the way back. I think it was 2015 or 16 when um, Paul Riley, who is one of the authors of this book called in my backyard when this book came out and i opened the book and i saw the chapter on croton and when i read it man i ran inside i call him same time i said are you serious and he said oh yes sister deborah it has many health benefits and i started drinking croton tea from then no so this is my pot just to, so, okay so i'm not lying showing you the proof so I took about two, three, about three leaves off it. I cut it up and I put it in the pot, right? Cover it. This is a stainless steel pot. We don't use aluminum pots to make our teas, yeah? And I let it boil. It was boiling for about uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And then now I have my lovely cup. Can you see in there? Of croton tea. See the color it has now? That's coming from the plant, right? Now what I like to do um sometimes depending on how i'm feeling like now it's very rainy we're having rain almost every day in Ultraus. and so you find yourself getting wet and now you find the throat start you know <clears throat> a little film film coming up so what i do when that starts happening this time of the year i'm feeling cool so the the tile is cold and the house is a little cold it's not as warm as the summer right and we're now coming into the season where the flu so even with this covid thing going around every year we have flu season and once it comes on to this time of year, you might find that your body has to work a little harder to you know, boost the immune system. So what you have to do is to ensure that you're increasing your vitamin C, right? So what I do now, I will take my lemon and I will just squeeze a little lemon juice in there, right? A little lemon juice into my tea. And then, because you know, honey has many health, health properties, I will add honey. You could even get some uh, ginger. And you could combine ginger with this tea. So I'm adding just a little bit, a teaspoon of honey, not too much, right, to my tea this morning. I will just mix it around, right, just mix it around. So this is my croton tea. I had some before, straight croton by itself. But just a demonstration purpose for you guys. Um, I'm adding a little lemon juice and a little honey to my croton tea. And then I'm going to taste it now. Tastes good, tastes good, tastes good. All right, listen to some of the health benefits of this plant. Now it says, the, this very attractive garden plant is grown in several varieties and is um, admired for its colorful and varied foliage. Surprisingly though, croton, crotons, all the varieties, the crotons are packed with many healing virtues that are unknown to many modern Caribbean people like me and you, right? I learned it back from 2015. You are learning it today. And do your own research, guys. Learn to Google and research. Now, I always caution people, you know, and everything from Google is true because some things you have what we call ghostwriters. And so when pharmaceutical companies want to send out their stuff and when um, some companies want to um, fight against natural remedies, they will get people to write articles, um, which is really not true. So I, I tend to pray a lot. 
when I'm reading things on, on Google, you know, I tend to pray a lot. <clears throat> I don't just accept anything because it's on Google, <laughs> right? You have many persons now who have Dr. Google. Once they read it online, it is gospel. No, it is not. We have to dig a little deeper and pray and ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. God is more than able to give that to his children. Now, the twigs, so when we say the twigs, the twig is this part. So these are the twigs, right? When you know it, when you pull off the leaf, right, let me just show you. So when we say the twigs, we're talking about this part. Hold on. Right, so that this part will be the twigs. You see this? This will be the twigs, right? These are the leaves. So in this in this country, I have three varieties. So I have this variety, I have another one, this variety, and then we have this one. So I have three varieties of cotton that I picked this morning. And I took one of each leaf to make my tea. So I combined it to make my tea, right? Now, listen up. <clears throat> the twigs, an infusion of twigs open the appetite. So persons who are having problems with, boy, Dr. Williams, I just don't have any appetite. I just don't have any appetite. Something is wrong with me. It helps to open the appetite. It also helps to eliminate worms from the gut. Isn't that awesome? Worm medicine from your creator. The leaves now, internally, taken as a decoction, so remember you have to boil it, right? The leaves are effective against diarrhea, at, um, arresting discharge and killing um, germs. Isn't that awesome? These include um, like bloody um, diarrhea, colitis, um, and influenza virus. The book says Croton is particularly effective against influenza virus. Um, lovely. Now, please be, please note, when we're going to use plants to make teas, do not use plants where you have a lot of cars driving past. Because remember, the plants pull in the, the poisons from the vehicles, right? So, like, I live up in St. Mary in the bushes. So, I don't have, where I am, I can easily get these and they're not out of vehicles around the place. So, it's good to go. So, please remember that when you're using up your plants, right? Now, it says... A decoction, remember decoction means boil, right? A decoction, therefore, is valuable for curtailing the infection as well as colds and flus. It's also good for epilepsy, convulsions, um, and amenorrhea. Decoction is a remedy good for resolving fevers. It also boosts the immune system. Isn't God an untimed God? No, I was just walking this morning and asking him, Lord, what do I share with your children today? And the Holy Spirit said, <laughs> and here we are now in the season with flu and even this COVID thing. So we can boost up the immune system with the curtain teas, right? It says it also to, it also helps prevent cancer development. <clears throat> Sorry, you hear that? That's what I'm trying to get rid of because I've been getting wet for the last couple of days because of the roof of rain. All right, no. So it says it also it it also helps with cancer development. Cancer, it prevents cancer development and proliferation, the spread of cancer, right? Helping to shrink tumors and the growth of tumors in the body. So, the book, the authors say, um, externally, the sap from the leaf is good for skin fungus, wound cuts, sores, and bruises. It's also a topical remedy for lesions on the skin for itching. It also helps with eczema. Decocted leaves make a soothing bath to relieve fever. So it's a nice big bunch like this. Big up, boil a big, big pot and just bathe, bathe the person with it. Bathe the person with it, right? Try and cool them down. Let them drink some at the same time. Um, if you have skin rash or eczema, allergies, you just simply take it, make it nice and strong, and just bathe with that. And stop using the heavy chemicals. And remember, stop wearing it for makeup, makeup. I used to love wearing it. I stopped wearing it now, right? Do up a lead lipstick and all it. It's just poisoning our bodies. Come on, by now, pores, right? It goes through the pore, it gets into the skin, gets into the blood and poison the body. Now, it says the root, that, that might be a little difficult to get the root off of this tree, but anyway, it says the root is good for stomach ulcers, right? Um, the bark and the root combined together is a good remedy for appetite loss, for stomach ache, for abdominal pains. It also has purgative properties, so it helps to relieve constipation. It's also good for syphilis and painful urination. So, I told you a while ago how I made my tea. In the book, it says for decoction, you add one 
teaspoon leaf. Now, to get a teaspoon of this, you'd have to cut it up. Use the scissors and just cut it up fine, fine, fine. Now, I learned to guesstimate it. So, I, you know, I'll just take off two or three or four leaves and just cut them up. And then I make my tea as I did this morning, right? Um, it says for, so you, you, take, you cut it off um, with the root, right? Uh, and then it says boil for three to five minutes and you'll take that two to three times per day. Now again, I'm only sharing with you a summary of what this plant can do. It, God has given us what we call phytochemicals in the plant, right? Um, so it's plant-based chemicals. And so we have the flavonoids and the antioxidants and so many things that are healing for the body. Remember, we're made from the ground, you know. God has made Adam from the dust of the ground, of the ground right? And then he breathed into him the breath of life and man became a living soul. So we are made from the dirt. So all of those minerals that comes from the earth, that we find in the earth, is in us too. And for us to be sustained and be in good health, we need to go back to nature, right? We need to feed the body on the natural things so that we can be in good health and prosper even as our soul shall prosper. Now, I hope you guys went and got your ministry of healing as I recommended in my video from yesterday. And yesterday I was sharing with you from the chapter about the physician being an educator. Now, I am a naturopathic doctor trained by Jesus. <laughs> I studied um, at an uh, uh, institution in the U.S. in Virginia called the Interna International Institute of Original Medicine. That's where I got my training from. But the most of my training comes day by day. It's life experience training, you know. So for the last eight going nine years now as a medical missionary, as I go from house to house and work with people, that's where my training comes from. It's really from experience. I have worked with thousands of people. I have gone to homes. I've gone to different countries. I've given them the herbs and I've watched how their bodies work. So our evidence is live evidence, not testing for no rat. You know, oftentimes you hear people will criticize and say, oh, you know, the Mabush doctor, oh, these naturopaths are not really doctors, they're not really trained. My training comes from experience. So I went to school, I studied for four years initially, but every day is a school and every day I'm learning. And as I learn and I apply and I pray, because you can't leave out God out of this body. He made it and he sustains it. So day by day as I go along and I have many reference books and herbs in my office and I keep studying them. So studying is a continuous process. It never stops, right? There are times when persons will come to me with some very strange disease with some long name and we can't even pronounce coming from these medical doctors. And I ask the Lord, Lord, what do I do with this person? Now you got to stay connected with the Lord when it comes to working with his children because the body belongs to God so my authority must come from Jesus my diploma my certification come from God <laughs> and yes I have studied officially anatomy and physiology from the the University of men but I do rely on God a lot to give me wisdom to help his people so Ministry of Healing the physician and educator I'm gonna read another part to you guys this morning it says a practice that is laying the foundation of a vast amount of disease and of even more serious evils is the free use of poisonous drugs when attacked by disease many will not take the trouble to search out the cause of their illness their chief anxiety is to rid themselves of pain and inconvenience so they resort to patent nostrums patent nostrums are those um, drugs that you know they have painted on it so it belongs to the pharmaceutical company it belongs to whoever that made it it says they um, resort to painted nostrums right of whose real properties they know little of it says so because they want to get rid of the pain it says when attacked by disease many will not take the trouble to search out the cause of their illness their chief anxiety is to rid themselves of pain and inconvenience. So they resort to pain and nostrums of whose real properties, the side effects of real, whose real properties they know little or they apply to a physician for some remedy to counteract the result of their misdoings. How we eating, how we living, go for garbage food, no exercise, all, all those things. They don't want to deal with that. They just want to get rid of the pain. So they go and get the drugs, get the drugs, get the drugs. But not looking at the cause. What is causing the disease? It says, so they apply to physicians for some remedy to counteract the result of their misdoing. But with no thought of making a change in their unhelpful habits. 
If immediate benefit is not realized, another medicine is tried, and then another. Thus, the evil continues. That's what God called it. The evil continues. People need to be taught that drugs do not cure disease. It is true that they sometimes afford present relief, and the patient appears to recover as a result of their use. This is because nature has sufficient vital force to expel the poison and to correct the condition that caused the disease. Health is recovered in spite of the drug. But in most cases, the drug only changes the form and the location of the disease. I see that every day in my office. <clears throat> they had what they had hypertension, have been on medication for years. Now the liver gone, the kidney gone, and they have poor blood circulation. Yeah, it just changed the form and location of the disease. She says, um, often the effect of the poison seems to, to be overcome for a time, but the results remain in the system and work great harm at some later period. So get a ministry of healing, guys, and start reading. It's an excellent book. God referred me to this book in 2012 when I had cancer. He said, read it, do what it says, and you'll be fine. I read it. I am doing it continuously every day until God put me to sleep because I want to be used by him to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. And then when I'm done, I can go to rest until Jesus Christ either come first or I sleep until the first, the first resurrection. No, the word from the word of God. This morning, I'm going to share with you guys from John chapter 15. I love the book of John. John, in his, in his um, gospel, was trying to explain to the world that Jesus Christ is God. He is the son of God. He is God. The Bible says, Emmanuel, God with us. In God, in man, God dwell. So here we have this mystery man called Jesus Christ. Right? He came to save us from our sins. Divinity was in humanity. So that humanity can see what man can be when God is back in his rightful place and the Holy Spirit is back. So Jesus kept telling them over and over. He said, I don't do my own work. The things you see me do, my Father is doing them through me. I don't speak my own words. The Father has told me what to do. The Father is speaking through me. Christ made that very clear. Now, God the Father, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, God wants to do the same thing in us. He wants to restore us. We have been redeemed. He wants to get his spirit back in us. Cast out the demon them and cast out Satan. The Bible says, submit yourself to God, James. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. So our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we must know that we are being inherited by the Holy Spirit when we start seeing all of those horrific satanic things that we used to do God. And we start seeing the fruit of the Spirit. It's a process, right? Love, joy, peace, right? Kindness, goodness, gentleness, long suffering, meekness, and temperance. Temperance is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It means self control. So many persons will say to me, Dr. Williams, I cannot change my diet. I cannot exercise. I cannot stop um, eating late. I cannot do um, new start, nutrition, whole food, plant based diet, exercise uh, at least five days per week, right? Sunlight. Temperance, air, rest, trust in God, having an attitude of gratitude, a spirit of benevolence and cleanliness. You may not be able to do it on your own, but when the Holy Spirit takes possession, He will do it through you. Just trust Jesus. Have faith in God. Mark 11, verse 22. Jesus said, Listen, just relax yourself and have faith in God. I will do it through you. Just give me your will. Give me your frontal lobe. Just give it to me. Surrender to me, and I will do it. So now, in John 15, our Lord says, if ye abide in me and my words, my word says Jesus, abide in you. The word of God abiding in you. So we study every day and we learn the word, we eat the word, we drink the word, we live the word, we breathe the word by the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, he shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. People have a habit of saying, God said, us ask what you want and he'll give it. He said, if my word abide in you from Genesis to Revelation it becomes a part of you then you can ask because you're going to ask right you're going to ask according to the word not, not according to your lustly your earthly fleshly lust but according to the things of this world you will ask according to the word he says in verse 8 
Therein is my Father glorified, that he bear much fruit. So shall he be my disciples. Praise the Lord. As the word abides in us, and we ask of Jesus the things that we need to go out there and be disciples, the Father will be glorified. Jesus will be glorified because we know our being. Um, we have been redeemed and we, we have been transformed, right? We put away the old man and the new man is now in full control. Verse 9 says, As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue he in my love. If he keep my commandments, he shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, says Jesus, verse 12, that he love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Here are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, said Jesus. So we have been chosen by him. He chooses us. He has pulled us out of darkness into his marvelous light. All we have to do is accept. Just accept the invitation, right? Jesus is the better choice. The devil doesn't have nothing to offer nobody. He's a little scammer. Henceforth, he said, he said, 16, He have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatsoever he shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. These things I command you, love one another. So my brothers and my sisters, it's a beautiful day. I am happy. I am drinking my curtain tea. I'm boosting my immune system. I'm staying as healthy as I can so that I can offer love to you, share with you, go down to my office. It's called the Center of Influence. We're at 170 Main Street, Old Trail. And from there, we influence one by one. You know, I don't worry about big crowd, you know. One at a time. Jesus went all the way across the ocean just to release one demoniac um, from Satan, right? Jesus walked through the multitudes to allow one woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years to touch the hem of his garment. He will go miles and miles to save one. So my focus each day, when I make these videos, I'm just fishing for one. I'm fishing for one for Jesus. One to turn away from sin. One to hear my testimony. One to learn how to change their diet. Because when your blood is poisoned and your, your brain can't work because there's so much toxins in your system, you can't hear from God. So we want to quiet down the noise. Quiet down the noise. COVID-19 is a time where we can all do introspection. We can all use the time to study the word. We can all use the time to draw closer to our creator and our God. Our Lord is coming very soon. A time of trouble is going to hit this world. Remember I told you guys, get the book called The Great Controversy by Helen J. White and start reading it. Read it, especially the last 10 chapters. Because everything that's going to happen has already been revealed by God. Somebody sent me something yesterday on WhatsApp about um, something to do with the Pope and um, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it was. And I sent back to the person, read Revelation 18. We know how this thing is going to end. And the Bible is very, very clear. So from Dr. Debs to all of you today, I leave a prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, your Holy Spirit and your angels who are ministering unto us. Thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for the covering, the blood covenant. We are covered under Jesus' righteousness. We have no righteousness of our own, but we receive Jesus even today. Father, we give you our will and accept that you have chosen us. We have been chosen, Lord. We accept the choosing. Now, Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit and use us to be light in a world of such darkness. Use us to be the salt in a world that has no salt, no flavor whatsoever. The enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy, but we thank you that Jesus Christ was sent to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And we know, even this very morning, that our Lord is interceding on our behalf and all our needs are met. Jesus says, if these words, if my words abide in you, ask what you will. So, Father, this morning, I'm asking you, 
to open up the platforms even more so this gospel of the kingdom can be spread to all the world so that the end can come and all this sickness and suffering can stop and all this death can stop and the enemy shall be destroyed forever this is our prayer with thanksgiving in jesus holy righteous and precious name we pray amen all right guys god bless you all have a wonderful day with jesus